Hi, I'm Roy Murphy. You're watching the BitConnect YouTube channel. Coming up in today's video, BitConnect's trading bot revealed. Hello everyone, I'm Roy Murphy. Welcome back to the BitConnect YouTube channel. Today we are talking about the BitConnect trading bot, where it is, how it works, what it does, all of those intricate things we will be covering in this video. Now, talking of videos, we've looked in depth at BitConnect's financial system. Uh, before uh, we did a video called how BitConnect can afford to pay out now if you haven't seen it already I really urge you to go and watch the video it's uh, quite revealing we will stick the link to that video in the comment in the uh, comments box below um, we've been looking at fiat currency as well in uh, our first market news video entitled the death of the dollar um, again to give you some perspective on everything we're going to talk about today I also urge you to go and have a look at that. That will also be in the links below this video as well. So when you see in the news about how Bitcoin is in a bubble, now the bubble's going to burst and they're all referencing, you know, this flawed judgment based on a limited knowledge of how an index system works. So in, in fiat currency, a debt-based inflationary system, it has many trading facets that commit and control and smooth out all of the things which is this wonderful thing that we see over here which is volatility now this is the coin market capitalization page you can see every single altcoin everything bitcoin to bitcash to bitconnect you will see on a daily basis down 3.86 percent up 1.86 percent scroll down you'll see some minus 10 percent this is true volatility and what does that represent? What does that mean? What does the price of Bitcoin mean? It's at 5,850 today. It has a market cap of $97 billion. Now, put that into perspective. $97 billion is the M1 money supply for the whole of the United Kingdom. Every physical amount of money, coins, uh, banknotes, promissory notes that are existent, liquid, fungible cash for 75 million people in England, Northern Ireland, Wales and Scotland. Imagine Bitcoin now has a market capitalization equal to all the money that exists in one of the biggest financial systems of the world. So we're not talking Mickey Mouse. We're not going back to 2009, 2010, you know, what's Bitcoin and all of the scare stories that happened in 2011 and 12 and 13 and all of the what would Trump call it fake news all of the fake news that's in the system now has been derived from the market capitalizations and the history of people being scared and it's the misunderstanding it's the not understanding certain elements of the system why people are so vociferous especially on YouTube now we've been really really lucky on our YouTube channel we have some great people we have a great community uh, I've got a great team that we've built up slowly over time that team and that community are a little bit more savvy and they want to know more information there's lots and lots of information on YouTube where people go through the motions and this is the system and you click this button and look how much money I've made today and you can do it too and click my referral link and everything will be fine people are sick and tired of that they want information we don't make these videos every single day for the sake of making videos every single day we believe in the system not blindly not because we're fanboys not because we are you know Bitcoin enthusiasts or BitConnect enthusiasts or you know, we don't subscribe to any particular type of ethereal thoughts about what cryptocurrency should be. That kind of politics is one of the reasons why I left the Bitcoin development in 2011 anyway. So not a lot of you knew that that was part of my history. I used to work with the Bitcoin uh, core many moons ago when it was in its early acceptance. And many of the reasons why I left was political um, but it was for the right reasons. It's because of all the noises and all the all the all the crap that was in the system, where it started to become something, and different people had different ideas about its use. And that's the reason why we have Bitcoin Cash today. That's the reason why there's going to be Bitcoin Gold soon in a couple of weeks. That's why there's Bitcoin Unlimited. That's why there are all these different forks. 
you know, with SegWit, SegWit, Bitcoin, SegWit X2. These are all variations from different thoughts and ideas, different perceptions of how they think the system should work. This isn't a centralized system. This is people at least doing something. It may not be the right thing. They may all have different use cases. Bitcoin Cash has a different use case to Bitcoin. So you have to start thinking about things now in perspective within the bigger picture. And, and we need to go back a little bit to understand the big picture, um, where the history of money comes from and, and why we have these perceptions that these these things are bad. Why is volatility bad? Yeah, traders don't like it. It's great if you're a starter and you make 10% in one day and then you can come in and sell out. That's that's brilliant. That is giving sovereignty back to the people, to the common people who don't who weren't ever allowed to trade to trade at any index. In the last 100 years to be able to do that you had to have a considerable amount of gold or assets or or liquid wealth it had to be in the millions for you to be one of those exclusive people who could trade stocks who could trade you know all these things if we go back now so if we look at the live orders we're looking now at live prices the ratios between Bitcoin and BitConnect in the live system so you can see here on the selling orders on the right hand side you've got the ask price and on the buying orders on the left hand side you've got the bid price now everything seems to be on its head and the reason why it looks like it's on its head is because most people want to buy low and sell high that's the way the world works people want to sell when it's at its uh, highest and buy when it's low and make some money in the meantime whether the markets go up or whether the markets go down. The bid price here is always tied heavily with the price of Bitcoin. Now if you look at the graphs between Bitcoin and just the last seven days trading this figure here look at the spikes and look at this this arc here it's almost completely emulated in BitConnect. And the reason why they're very, very so closely tied is because BitConnect shadows Bitcoin. Lots of the volatility and lots of the volume with Bitcoin is tied because the volatility and the trading in BitConnect with BitConnect. So the reason why we've had 13.6 million in volume is because that is what's been traded in BitConnect privately on the BitConnect, or mainly 98% has been on the BitConnect platform. And the volatility is based tied on the relationship and the market demand for both BitConnect and for Bitcoin. That's why they're so so closely tied together. And you have to understand that um, when you're talking uh, the difference between cryptocurrencies, tied currencies, crypto tokens, which are completely different, and fiat currencies, which is its own beast. And it's a beast that needs to be tamed. It's a beast that's going to, to kill itself. Um, it's just a matter of time before everything goes away. So the ratio here, you can see that the ratios between BitConnect and Bitcoin. Now this is the Bitcoin ratio between BitConnect 0 0.337020. And the trades underneath it are lower and lower and lower. So you, it looks on face value that the first trade is actually the highest. And why would you want to buy high? The difference between the ratio is an inverse proportionality. So the higher the volatility that this goes, the volatility is created by this going and the cheaper one coming into fruition and going up the going up because it's it has the least range, it has the least buying power ratio between BitConnect and Bitcoin. And the volatility of this disappearing and this one moving up to the next one means that the, the lower trades, the, the the more hedging trades will go up the system. Now let's say for instance, not many people know this. When you sell Bitcoin for BitConnect, so if you're buying, you are buying BitConnect with Bitcoin. So the ratio that you would want to sell, if you sold one BitConnect coin here at this price, it's not just your trade because this is the trade that's being offered. All of the other people that have traded will be added to this amount. This will be purchased at this price at this trade. And when that trade price for the total amount of BitConnect coins that are available, it will disappear and then be, be put into your BitConnect calculator wallet. 
your, your BitConnect wallet. And the same vice versa over here. So the velocity of all of these disappearing, these all move up. There are pages and pages and pages, and this will always go up in value, and this will always go down in value as you, as you descend down through the list. So the ratios, the difference between this figure and this figure over here, and if you stared at this all day and you were, you were mathematically minded, you could see the void between this figure and this figure, which changes throughout the day. And that is a really good predictor of how the day's performance will transpire over a course of 24 hours. It doesn't always happen like that because there are market events that could change it, but it gives you a really good indicator. And we can look at some of those indicators in a minute. So let's get rid of the Marco cap and let's get rid of this. Now let's look at these bubbles that we keep looking at. So we're told all the time, Bitcoin is in a bubble. Yeah, Bitcoin, look at that. Look at the, it all drops and goes up and goes up and goes up and then it drops and it goes up and up and up. You notice the trend, it's always going up. Now it hasn't always gone up. Look at this big void over here from June 2014 till the early part of 2016. That is because of another perceived bubble. Now it wasn't a bubble. There was a market reaction to something that very, very seriously happened at the end of this big uptick here. Now, if you look at this, this big swipe, this big mountain here, people look at that and say, it's a bubble. It can't be maintained. It's, it's not real. Um, everything's going to crash. Everyone's going to lose their money. The short answer is no. It will go up, it will go down, it is volatile, but let's zero in on what happened in 2014. Let's zoom in to this area here and you can see if you make this canonical and you look at the same figure, it looks very similar to what we're seeing now, but it's logarithmic in scale. So this massive bubble, when you got to here, this is where we had the equivalent of a stock market crash and it crashed for outside reasons that weren't anything to do with BitConnect and its volatility, availability, it dropped because lots of people lost access to their money. Now when the whole Mt. Gox fiasco happened there were hundreds of thousands of people with billions and billions of dollars worth of stuff in their in their online wallets with Mt. Gox. When Mt. Gox went pop because of really bad practices, um, allegedly they had lots of their wallet um, tokens um, stolen and transferred. Now, where I keep a lot of my Bitcoin is in blockchain. Now, blockchain.info, it's actually based in Luxembourg, but it's a lot of the funding money has come from Richard Branson. Um, my TV is about to go off, so I need to push some buttons. Um, what we need to do is figure out the reasons why this, this could happen. So the reason why this was a market reaction to something that happened with something that should never happen. Exchanges now are going more decentralized. They're not owned by a company. They're not supposed to be infallible anymore um, by having exchanges going to the blockchain, the blockchain is the security for your holding. So this is the reason why we have this big drop down here and then a little recovery and then slowly over time it, it got eaten away. Now in the news and in the media they absolutely love this as a story and it's like yeah we told you it was a bubble and it was always going to crash and there was everything in the media for such a long time was dedicated around um, the dark web and prostitution and, and drug money and everything. So this is a massive consolidation period. And I think we're entering into a bit of a consolidation period now where everything adjusts and we'll see why that adjusts uh, in a moment. But when we compare figures like this with the amount of trending, people aren't used to that when they look at normal trading. So if we look at the dollar index, for instance, let's refresh this, let's go to the five day. Let's do a five day dollar index. Now let's refresh, let's go to five day. So let's think about the dollar if this ever decides to load. Oh, my internet's gone a bit funny today. We're having lots of winds here in the UK. Remnants from hurricanes that you guys in America sent us. Thank you very much. Um, so look at this. This is five days. This is volatility in a very small 
area. If you look at this difference between 94 points and 93 points, it went down to, what was it, 93.07 at its lowest over the last five days. When you think of that in percentage terms, over five days, it hasn't traded up or down more than 0.6%. Whereas Bitcoin has gone up and down 10 times that today. So that's the difference in volatility. If you look at what the US dollar, as an example, as it is probably the biggest um, world reserve currency for how long, I, I doubt it that much longer. But think about what is tied to this, this one thing, this one entity, this, this US dollar. Think about it. There's gold, there's silver, there's precious metals, you've got stocks, you've got bonds, there's central bank notes, you've got the velocity of, of money that's in circulation, you've got interest rates, oil prices, um, you've got futures markets, you've got derivatives, treasuries, you've got uh, a country's GDP, you've got federal reserves, you've got federal rates, you've got debt levies, you've got the M1 and M2 money supply, um, you've got federal spending, you've got money creation rates, you've got business assets, household assets, household spending, um, you've got industry, you've got trade, you've got tax revenues, you've got income, and probably the most important would be market confidence. Market confidence is the confidence that people have in trading these markets based on what they think those markets are doing. It's, it's humans being predictive. It's a human element. And because humans are inherently greedy, it's the hedging and betting on a very, very stable system, which is why we get these very narrow peaks and troughs. But we don't get that. If we look at a system, this is 24 hours in Bitcoin. So you can see. Now there are only $3.2 trillion of M1 money supply in existence in America. But it's in 20 point four trillion dollars worth of debt so that's a gross debt to gtp ratio of 105.5 percent so there isn't enough liquidity in the us dollar system to ever pay out any of the debt now the system of creating money out of thin air to control markets and dollar value is insane and it cannot last it's mathematically impossible but people look at figures like this and they say that this is not sustainable this is a bubble but it's not now, if you look at Bitcoin, so this is, this is Bitcoin, this is the trading for 24 hours. Now, if you look at Bitcoin, Bitcoin is a deflationary currency. It's a store of value and it is a ledger and it's a central bank and it's autonomously running on the most powerfully encrypted decentralized network in the world. It's an asset class of its own. It doesn't require any fiat currency whatsoever to have value. So like gold, you can mine it. It's, it's effectively, you can actually be part of that minting process. That process, it's a fixed decreasing rate. So the value will always, um, it will always representatively go up. So what else gives it value? I mean, look at these peaks and troughs. What, what are giving all of these values, these big peaks, these big troughs, these, you know, this selling volatility throughout the day now this is a trader's worst nightmare unless you're on the right side of the trade traders aren't used to this so this is alien this is a bubble to them this is this is stuff that conventional um conventional financial theory i mean if you've ever studied uh, austrian finance um, uh, methodologies this completely goes against it because those methodologies were based on the things that we were taught were what the dollar and the pound and the yen were supposed to be and it just isn't so so what else gives it value um it's just one thing it's the direct market this is a true a true representation of the market nothing else that's it it's supply and demand it's a very very simple system so you still have hedging and betting and hoarding and splurging, but that's part of the trading system anyway in, in, in general. So it's money, it's currency, it's an asset, it's tangible, it's fungible, it, it's tradable, and this is trading on the system. So how would the bot, this mysterious elusive bot that people keep talking about and keep trying to find, how would that work in this system? Now, what I've done here is I've got my RSI classes up here. Now, this 
RSA class is an indicator. And if we go down to the indicators here, you can see that the RSI is the relative strength index. So the reason why I brought this up, the RSI is more ind indicative of what the markets are about to do. This is something that anyone that's ever used any kind of uh, even $10 FX trading platform will know that it has RSI generators. And what this does, it's a predictive uh, algorithm that works out the money supply within the system relative to the to the volume and the demands and the price. So when you see here, you've got the RSI, it starts to dip. So this is a sign of oversupply. And then when we get to undersupply, the, it, the market rises up. And this is an indicator when it gets past this level here, the 80% or the 70% mark, and anything below 30. When it gets above that mark, it is always indicative of a rise. The demand is there. When we go back to the trading platform on the left hand side and the right right hand side where we're looking at buying and trading and selling in BitConnect, that system also works with Bitcoin and it works throughout the system. So as there is more demand, those lower values become higher, they become, you know, people start buying at higher rates. So the value goes up and you can see it's emulated here. So this is how this system works. The bot trading and the trading in general works on supply and demand. It's a really, really simple system. There's nothing technical about it. Most people think that trading bot um, is, you know, they think it's some ethereal robot. What is the trading bot? Well, let me first tell you what it isn't. Now, as a programmer who's someone who's worked um, with financial systems, I've built FX systems, I've worked with massive companies, big banks, big financial institutions, I've done spread betting, trading, so I understand the systems, but I also understand cryptocurrencies. I understand cryptocurrencies because I've been in it since the very beginning, I've run my own blockchain, I've supported blockchain, I've worked with BitGo, I've worked as a developer on Bitcoin, um, I've made my own cryptocurrencies, I've made my own wallets, I've made my own ledgers, so I understand the system how it works in depth. And I've done some digging into the BitConnect system. So the BitConnect system, what isn't it? Well, it's not any kind of artificial intelligence. It's nothing that complex and it doesn't need to be. All it needs is to know a few rules as to what to do when this happens here and this happens here. Now, let's talk about how the trading itself actually works. So if you were predicting a rise here, then you would keep some of your Bitcoin assets, bearing in mind that when the bot trades, it doesn't trade BitConnect, it trades the Bitcoin that you give it at the beginning. It's the only way out is either moving your BitConnect coins into a different QT wallet or, or a different exchange, or you move it back into Bitcoin. So the only way in and the only, well, the only way in is via Bitcoin. And that asset is held and traded every single day. Thank you, Cryptoranium, commenting on the channel. Well, we've got a new video. We're in the middle of making a new one. So if you find this one, you're welcome. And I will speak to you online soon. Welcome to the channel. So looking at the volatility. So if you had, let's say we had an asset class of a thousand Bitcoins. Now it's a lot more than that, but we're just going to use a thousand as a representative index. If you were going to see this uptrend here, you would stake based on the staking weight of that rise, a percentage based on the fact that you think it is indicated, the market is indicating that it is going to go up. So what you will do, depending on the weight, the risk value, so say the risk value was, was valued unlogarithmically, say one to 10. If it said the risk value was only two, it would bet say 40% of all of its assets. Uh, to buy at this price here and then who knows what happens so it readjusts to the market when it comes here now it may have made a 5% swing here so you don't get the 5% swing you get roughly a third of that and I've already done a video of, of to how the uh, Bitcoin volatility software um, functions are representative on the actual trades that the bot makes in relation to the amount of interest that you gain within the BitConnect platform. It is logarithmic, it's not a fixed value, and we've dug into that before, so please find those other videos. Um, if you like these videos so far, don't forget you need to subscribe. We don't make videos for the sake of it, we give you all the knowledge so you are better informed, to, to give you better insights, to use the system better. Um, 
everybody should be able to, to do really well through this system. And we give you the, the answers to all of your questions. So if you've got any questions, stick them in the comments box below, please. So this isn't a market trader doing these bot transactions every day. OK, so we know what it isn't. It is not an FX trading type system and we know it's not an off the shelf trading system. What is the bot? How does the bot work? So it's a representative bot trading on the peaks and troughs of the RSI indicators. It's very, very simple. So I tell you what it is. The bot is an open source Telnet C++ client API. Now that probably to most of you doesn't mean a thing. What it is, it's a very, very small script. It is an IP address that accepts and receives communication between only one channel. That would be the trading channel and the, the valuation channel, the Explorer, which gives you the live details for Bitcoin. That is all it is. It's so simple. All it does, it has preset um, credentials that tell it the percentages to bet, to sell, to trade uh, in bull markets and in bear markets. And that's it. It's a very, very simple system. Now, I've checked out the system. What I will not do is give um, directions on what it is and why it is and how it works, because that would be a security issue. Um, but what I can tell you is stuff that you can find out yourself. Now, I invite you to go and find this information. It is all public knowledge. If you are a coder and you understand the system, you can find that by going to the GitHub repository for BitConnect. If you know your C, C code, you know your C++, and you can work out the, you di dive deep into all of the, uh, into all the folders and you actually read and extrapolate all of that information, you will figure out because it's there. It's there in plain sight. So the execution code for the BitConnect trading bot is written in Python. I will give you that. It resides on at least 15 or more networked Linux servers around the world. It's not a decentralized system. It's a central system and it's central for a reason. And that reason is because uh, of security. And it's also it's proprietary software. So this isn't stuff that you should know. So it is proprietary software written in house. Now the script is only 11 megabytes in size. The whole bot is 11 megabytes. It's a very small, it's a relatively small script. Okay, that controls these trading algorithms. That's it. And it's on a very large servers and all those servers do is they have um, the database server which uses a centralized blockchain for storing on a trading ledger. Now this is a centralized blockchain. This isn't a decentralized blockchain because it's a central system and it has to be locked down. People don't know, or aren't going to want to know, or a lot of people would love to know the trades that the bot is about to make. And those bots, uh, the trades that the bots themselves make are public knowledge on the Bitcoin ledger because the addresses are there. You can tie them to accounts. Uh, if you're clever enough, you can go to the accounts, they're there on the blockchain. Uh, if you dig into those under their crypto IDs and you see their transaction IDs, you can see their wallet IDs and you can see the amounts uh, of, of uh, BitConnect coins that are in there. And you can also see who they belong to by the fact that they are the top 20 richest list of all the people that own everything within the system. So it's very evident who uh, the BitConnect system and the, and the bot is trading for. Um, so that is, again, if you dig into it, it is public knowledge. So we know that it's stored as a trading ledger. This can be found in the code base on GitHub. If you run a full client node, you will find all the transactions and all the IP addresses from the bots. So it's not something I can just show you because it takes a big infrastructure of servers to be able to actually run a uh, client telnet server. Uh, it's, it's going to be a full node. So if you have all that system, if you're a developer, you've probably done this already. I've already done this already. So I imagine there's hundreds of people, you know, big developers around the world have probably played around with it. It's actually not that important. The fact that it works is important. The fact that the system um, can sustain itself is important. So 
I think that's one of the most important things. So, I mean, it uses floating IP addresses, so the servers are encrypted on the network. I could give you an IP address and it would change in 10 minutes anyway, so there's no point. You can't ping it. The servers are mirrored in co-locations around the world, and it has its own explorer. Um, so it has this explorer, so if you run a full client, you will find out all the real-time addresses. So they are actually off the grid. The transactions between the databases are off grid. You can't ping them. There's no IP address you can get to. Okay, they use an internal network of databases tied to a local IP address, an internal network, so it cannot be snooped by anyone on the on the internet. So, when I say that, it receives a response. Uh, it's the right encryption, and then it just pings the database with the li uh, live market data, and then it responds accordingly, making uh, making a trade, making a buy order or a sell order. So that is how the bot works. That is your trading bot. Okay, I hope that. I don't know if that simplified it for you or made it even more difficult, but if you run a full client, you will see everything you need to know and nothing that you shouldn't. It is proprietary software. Remember that. These are all the scripts, all the algorithms. If you went to your bank and said, you know what, I bank with you and I think I think you should send me the scripts, your trading scripts for your bank, your proprietary software. Can you show that to me? And they're going to tell you where to go. They're going to say, no, no it's a security issue. I've worked on these systems, I know, and uh, that's only because of the industry that I work in, because I've worked in fintech for such a long time, because I'm an, an enterprise architect, I deal with this all of the time. I've worked with big, big banks and you obviously have to be security vetted and you have to have the highest authority to be able to work on these systems. Uh, even though this is a centralized system, uh, you have to be able to... Uh, to understand that this is a security issue so there are other things we will be talking about we will be talking about the actual transaction IDs of uh, some of the bot trades so we will dig into that at another time um, but they do exist um, that's a little bit of insight so hopefully that gives you some more knowledge some more insights about the uh, the trading bot itself I, I really hope you like this video and it wasn't too long for you don't forget all of those videos and the links to other videos that are in relation to this topic are in the comments box below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, I'm Roy Murphy, you've been watching the BitConnect YouTube channel and I will see you in the next video. This video was brought to you by Team Smurf. We bring you new videos, each and every day. To join our team, click the referral link below this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and interact with us in the comments box below. But connect. Creating wealth for everyone.